and a camel. The Muslims had already been promised victory. So what you find in the ayah of the Quran in Surah Al-Anfar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I say in the translation of meaning, as your Lord caused you, O Muhammad, to go out from your home with the truth, and verily a party from among the believers disliked it, disputing with you concerning the truth after it was made manifest, as if they were being driven from death while they were looking at it. And remember when Allah promised Muslims the victory of one of the two parties, of the enemy either by the army or the caravan should be yours. But Allah had willed to justify the truth by his words and cut off the roots of the disbelievers. And here in the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? And Allah has promised the victory of one of two things. I vanquishing the army or gaining the caravan. So here the victory for the Muslims had already been promised. They had already been told that they will gain this victory in the plains of Badr. Yet the question remains, why did they go into so much planning and thinking about how to engage in this battle? And the lesson we can really draw in here for us, and I'm going to touch upon this later on at the end of the talk, is here, even though the victory was promised for the Muslims, they didn't sit back on the sands, on the cushions, drinking a nice cup of mint tea, sitting back thinking, well, you know, we're going to gain the victory. Let's just sit back, we chill for a little bit. You know, the sun's a bit hot. Let's just sit, chill in the shade for a little bit. When it's a little bit cooler, we go out, we fight, and then we'll come back again. Because this is our attitude today when we get asked about things, isn't it? When we get asked about why aren't we engaged in the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and engaged in working to re-establish the Khilafah. Ah, it's going to come, it's going to happen, Allah's promised it, let's just chill out, you know, watching the Spurs versus Liverpool game. You know, what's going to happen at the end of the season? You know, do you think United could get it again? Ronaldo sold to Real Madrid, who's going to win the Premier League? You know, this work for Khilafah, this work for Allah's deen, it can wait, it's promised. You know, Imam Mahdi will bring the victory. Let's just chill out and... And let's just see what happens in the Premiership. Was this the attitude that was demonstrated by the Sahaba and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ? Clearly we can see from their planning that it was anything but, you know, sitting there and chilling out and thinking about what's going to happen. Rather they thought and they engaged themselves thinking about how they could become victorious in this battle. And inshallah at the end of the talk I want to touch upon some of these things again. So the next example I really want to discuss was the night before the battle. The night before the battle. And here there's a, a, a really beautiful hadith of, uh, that's been narrated by uh, Imam Ali. And it's reported by in the books of Imam Ahmed. And Ali radiallahu an, he said, I saw everyone except the messenger of Allah. I saw everyone asleep. Yeah? I saw everyone asleep except for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was praying under a tree and he wept until the morning so again a lesson for us here was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already been promised the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this battle of Badr had already been promised yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he remained awake for the whole night in prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala weeping and asking dua to Allah for victory until the morning. That when the Sahaba woke up, they saw the tears on the Rasulullah face because of his crying and his imploring to Allah for the victory. So, again, another demonstration for us the Sunnah, even though the Rasulullah had been promised victory, he remained in prayer throughout the whole night, making dua to Allah, supplicating to Allah, asking Allah for victory, asking Allah for his help. And the other question you might ask is, why were all the other Sahaba sleeping? Why was it only Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was awake for the whole night, praying towards Allah? Where was all the other Sahaba? And we know from the ayah in the Quran, again in Surah Al-Anfal, in verse 11, why the Sahaba were asleep. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala He says in the translation and meaning, He says, remember when He covered you with a slumber, with sleep, as a security from him, and he caused water to uh, he caused rain to descend from you, upon you from the sky, to clean and thereby remove from you the ridges, uh, the filth and the whispering of the shaitan, and to strengthen your heart and to make your feet firm thereby. So here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He says, 
that he sent upon them asleep. He made them feel sleepy. He made them feel drowsy. And in the tafsir of Imam Qurtubi, he describes why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. And I read from the tafsir. He says, in his commentary of this verse, al Qurtubi said, the sleep occurred on the night before the battle. It is truly amazing that they slept in peace when they knew about the grave danger they were about to face in the morning. Yeah? You don't imagine when you have a big exam in the morning. How do you feel the night before? Yeah? Sleep is the last thing that you can do. Yeah? When you know you have your driving test in the morning. Now I know my own personal example, the night before I was about to get married. The last thing I could do was sleep. You know, I was happy and I was worried. Yeah? And you, you know, whenever you face a big test the next day, the night before is always filled with what? It is always filled with worry or excitement. And the last thing you can do is actually sleep. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he sent sleep upon the Sahaba. Why? So when they woke up in the morning, they felt fresh. They didn't feel tired. They felt fresh that they engaged in a battle. Whereas with the Quraysh, they were filled with worry. And they were filled with fear, with regards to what would happen with them in the, in the battle. So that was, a, that was a, another a really nice example of how, you know, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favoured the believers. And that how Allah he helps the believers even though when the odds seem against them. And if you remember from Imdad's talk last week, the odds were how many? You're talking about 300 Muslims with only a few, she uh, with only a few camels and a few horses. I think it was even only one horse. Compared to the army of the Quraysh, numbering over a thousand. With their armory, with their camels, with their horses. Yet here, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he helps the believers in their battle and in their preparation. And the second thing here is, uh, is the second part of this ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about here. Because the other thing that happened during that night before the battle, Allah caused rain to descend upon the skies. And there's one thing I know about the deserts, the last thing you get in deserts is rain. Which is why they call it a desert. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he caused rain to descend upon the sky. And again in Imam Qutbi's tafsir, he describes why this happened. And he says that in the plains of Badr, the sand is so soft, that when you walk upon the sand, it's like quicksand, your feet sink in. His feet sink into the sand and therefore making it more difficult for you to march and for you to walk upon the sands. But here Allah He favours the believers and He calls what to happen? He calls rains to descend from the skies. So what happened? It made the sand stick together so it's not as soft. It made it like mud. So it made it easier for the Muslims to walk and to march across this mud. So again here how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He bestows favours upon the Muslims when they believe and they place their, uh, they place their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they were able to march forward on the plains of Badr in ease and in tranquility and the second thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this ayah that he removed the ridges he removed the impurities so some of them during the night became impure they were dirty, they were tired so here by the rain falling it refreshed them it removed the way they sweat and their impurities and it filled their hearts with tranquility. So here, the, the, the tafsir, he goes on to say that, you know, the other meaning behind removing the ridges is how through the rain, it removed the, the, you know, the bad thoughts they had, the worry they had about facing the Quraysh the next day. The whispers of the shaitan that came during the night, whispering into their ears, saying that how they were going to be defeated, saying that how they were facing humili humiliating loss. How Islam will be wiped off of the map of the Middle East, of the, of the Arabian Peninsula. But here, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused this rain to descend. And he caused the vanquishing of this, of this whispering of the shaitan. So the second lesson we can learn from us today. From this example. Is removing the waswas, the, the whispers of the shaitan. And today the whispers of the shaitan come in many forms. And one of the forms that the whispers of shaitan it comes in is in the form of the news and in the media and in the films. That we're constantly being bombarded, being bombarded with films about how great the American army is. So you watch films like Star Wars, yeah? Or you watch films like Rambo, you know, one man with a bit of ribbon around his head, you know, going into the jungle, taking on the whole army. 
you know, one bit old is a real